Welcome to Bowtie's Battle of the Bows, where two students debate about classroom topics from their own point of view. Today, we will be debating about student and teacher connections to the real world. Connections to the real world, such as analogies, inquiry, and application, strengthen student understanding of any topic, regardless of the difficulty. First up, we have Jack Martinez, a ninth grader. Welcome to the show, Jack. Hi, happy to be here. Next up, we have Sabrina Rice, an eighth grader. Welcome, Sabrina. Hi, I'm excited to be on the show. Sabrina's heads and Jack is tails. It's heads. Three, two, one, go. go. Let's start with the most simple. Practice makes perfect. If you're calculating percentages in math, for example, then you'll know how to do taxes and leave tips in restaurants because you learned it at a younger age. If you start practicing the skills when you're in, say, elementary school, middle school, or even high school, then you'll have no problem doing those things when you're older because you already have practiced doing them. And the skills will have fermented in your brain. Uh, my second point is that it builds confidence. So if you actually start like learning how to do certain things when you're younger, then you will feel confident doing them when you're older. And not only will you be able to do them well, because you practice makes perfect, but you'll actually feel confident doing them. My third point is that students will pay attention more because they actually know that what, you're, what they're learning is something that they're gonna have to use in real life. So if they're just saying something, I mean, if you're just teaching something that they'll never need to pay attention to, obviously they'll learn it to get the good grade, but they won't actually make the effort to retain it unless they know that they actually are going to need what they are learning. Also, people are going to pay attention more because they'll want to actually learn and you'll have a more focused class. And those were all my questions. Firstly, I'd like to bring up that in inquiry and if you impl implement inquiry into the classroom, the lesson plans often go faster than they would if somebody was just lecturing at you because students are answering each other's questions as they reach the final point of just trying to get to the final point of maybe 2 plus 2 is 4, although that's not exactly a substantive answer. It's still something that may be used as an example. Secondly, I'd also like to bring up that when a student is in an inquiry-based discussion or an inquiry-based learning period, they often feel more engaged in the subject because they're integrated more into the lesson itself. So when something like in a spiderweb discussion, when a kid asks, oh, am I, what happens when a tail, when a whale swims? And another kid answers, well, I know the back tail moves, and I know what the dorsal fin moves, even though whales don't have dorsal fins, something like that, and they keep answering each other's questions. So you're often covering unit material through each other's answers, which goes back to speed, and then students also feeling more integrated because it's not just the teacher teaching themselves, they're teaching themselves. And finally, Inquiry, when you're, whether you're working in cooperation or you're trying to just answer a question yourself, it teaches real world skills. It teaches public speaking. It teaches things like um, problem solving and cooperation and respectively arguing and debating and backing up facts and ideas and arguments. It teaches all these things so that we can build the next generation of people that solve the problems in our world. So, um, based on your application, aren't you worried about inconsistency throughout the grades and throughout different curriculum that needs to be taught as if somebody maybe moves through different states or different counties or they're just a different curriculum throughout the grade levels? Are you worried at all about inconsistency? Well, you will always have that skill, like mindset, but even if uh, maybe the teaching style of application skips a grade, you'll still be able to use those skills all the time because that's the whole point of application when you can build on it but you will just stay at that one specific not level but like amount I guess of the of whatever skill that you're trying to learn until you go to the next one or you could also do it by yourself you could like even if your teacher uh, if you really want to if the student really wanted to learn about application then they could also figure out how to do that by themselves 
Um, my question for you is, what kind of methods would you use for inquiry? So in an inquiry-based learning classroom, you would implement something called a spider web discussion, which is that everybody sits in whatever shape you want, whether it's a circle, rectangle, whatever is preferable to you, and you have each person, when a kid speaks, you put a little dot on their name, and then when the next person speaks, you draw a line to them. And you keep drawing a line, and however thick or consistent the line is, is how many times one or two people have talked. So that way you can visualize, okay, who is asking the questions, who is participating more, who do I need to reach, who's a bit more confused. So that way you're taking accurate notes as an educator, and you're able to view multiple different things throughout one discussion. And also, it gives students public speaking, it gives students backing up arguments as real life skills, and all the necessary things you might need in your life. Now to tie it all up, like a bow. As you can see, these students each have an equal point of view. Which is why it's so important to expose oneself to different points of view in the classroom, so that students can associate that to real world however they want. As Jack said, when inquiry is being used in the classroom, lessons tend to go by faster, and students feel more involved in the unit material. And not only is that unit material being taught, but they are also learning real world connections. Per Jack's example, the spiderweb discussion is a great way to spark inquiry in the classroom. Practicing real-world skills within a unit plan helps mastery of any topic. Application builds confidence in anything, and students will retain information much easier if they have something real to associate it with. Public speaking skills and analogies being made in the classroom are some, some great examples of application. Aside from both of these approaches, there are an infinite amount of ways that teachers can use real-world connections in their classrooms. So, which one did you like better? application or inquiry. Be sure to comment below. And remember, we're always open to hear your ideas or suggestions, so just let us know. Thank you for tuning in on Battle of the Bows. Check out our Instagram, Twitter, and website all listed in the description below. Be sure to subscribe, like, and share, and don't forget to turn on that notification bell to ensure that all of our videos appear on your feed. Be sure to catch us next month. See you next time.